All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had to bring in an audience for today because it's about to be next level. Please show some love for the one, the only, Bozzy hanging out. Clap it up, clap it up for Bozzy one time. There he is. There he is. That means get in here now, bro. We're on a oh time my God. schedule. What's up, everybody? How we feeling? What's going on? What's going on? Bozzy, what's good, sir? Just chilling, man. Before yeah. the, the work and all of that stuff, just right now, how is how is life in general? Just you, life, how are we? Man, honestly, life right now like is pretty much just the work, to be real with you. I've been on the road for like four months, and I'm on the road for like the next three. Like It was so weird. I went back to – so I had a show in L.A. so I could stay at my apartment there. And I was there for like three days, and it like felt so weird. Like I didn't feel like I was home. Like you get used to being on the move so get, much. You get used to being on the move, yeah. And then like you walk out of it, and it's like I looked in my apartment. It's like the last time I'm gonna see it for three months. It's just like that's crazy. so weird. Do you even have like things fixed, or is it just boxes and stuff? Well, everywhere, this is or? the thing. So I lived in this. So I live in this. Like it's like the La Brea Loft. So I just gave out my address. Well, you say your number though. Well, so. whatever. You don't know I live <laughs> Party there, at his house. So I lived in one of the units, and then. Uh, I had my stuff moved in there and then I got a, like another one with like a better view and I had like I paid someone to move everything into it so there's like no like it's actually funny I'm a child I actually was just there for three days with no electricity or anything because oh like I'm just a kid I don't know you have to sign up for this stuff it doesn't just come with the lights on you know it's so funny uh my co-host jackie right here she just she just moved out here and and this is like one of her i mean she did it before but this is like one of her first times really going in and and just kind of getting things together like on her own and she's the same thing she's like god being an adult sucks sometimes oh my bro god, it's, it's not easy you gotta get wi-fi and then you gotta get cable you know what i'm saying it's like it's not See, these are the there. priorities he's not worried about food in the fridge not he's not worried about nothing he's worried no, about no, wi-fi no, 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 no. <laughs> no but it's funny because like you know this job takes a lot of like you know my attention so it's tough to give it to the other stuff you know what i'm saying like jordan my tour manager i don't know is he right there i just pointed to him but he's, he's not somewhere there. he's somewhere out there but he literally saves my life but he like gets it that i need him to like do this stuff for me because it's like it takes so much brain capacity to like you know always be focused and you know be focused on the art so i don't have to focus on like you know Getting my electricity on, which it still isn't. <laughs> so Jordan's still doing a bad job. But. I uh, I don't know if you know who Steve Lobel is. I, he's like an OG in the game. I was having a conversation with him a couple weeks ago, and he's telling me the same thing. Cause like he, like founded like Bone Thugs and Harmony and managed them, and like he's been doing things for years. And he was like, dude, I'm at an age now where I can't really have kids anymore because I gave so much of my life to to the game and to these artists, and it's crazy to try and find time to focus on me, but I don't know how to do it. And I was like, it's crazy because like in the radio thing, we're like the same way. We live it, we breathe it. We're in a bunch of different cities. We travel here and go here. To me, though, it's like work is real life. Yeah. And then real life is, is, is the yeah. work. 100%. That makes sense to you? That makes so much sense. And it's like, I remember I, I had it one day off in L.A. And it was like my first like day off I've had in like, I don't know, a long time. Where I could just sleep in and like wake up. I had nothing to do the whole day. And I felt like an anxiety the whole day. You know what I'm saying? It was like after just like constantly doing so much stuff, it's like, what do I do with all this time? Like, I wanted to do so much that it, like, almost, like, belittled me. You know what I'm saying? I went to the beach, and I was like, I don't know. But even then, I like, 15 minutes of that, it's still kind of like, all right, now what's next? Yeah, exactly. No, because you build <laughs> this, like, it's a certain type of anxiety that, like, pushes you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, once you start doing it, you're like, I'm, I'm already in it. Like, if I'm if I'm 98%, it's like, man, like, how can I maximize? I'm already putting, you know, all of my time and all of my energy into this like I don't want it to, uh, to fail and that's the fear and anxiety that you know pushes you to continue to do better I am um, I, I don't know your background info like that like how I mean I know you started like hella young like singing right like, I mean you were like in a talent show or something when you were like what yeah. sixth grade or something like that yeah 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 yeah. so I mean just the same thing I've, I've always wanted to do this like my entire life um since I was literally I got a guitar when I was six and it was just like my dad got me took home a guitar was and he was, into music and stuff or no he just so it's good funny gift? yeah he just thought it'd be a good gift no one in my family has like done music but i'll say that he's very musical like they always put me on a good music they're playing prince and michael jackson and you know guns and roses and foo fight like they always put me on a good music and i fell in love with it really young um and yeah i mean it, it's just it's always been the destination and the goal and you know i got a little older and started finding ways to get my post youtube covers and stuff like that and then i had my first studio session and realized that my ability was in producing and you know creating and you know you know cultivating a record and after that i took everything down and spent you know almost four years building my sound and you know just separate from music getting to know myself better and you know my tendencies and and, and just figuring out myself personally and once i I did that the music kind of 
came hand in hand with it. And when you um, we are. When, when you hear like certain records now, because yeah, a lot of people know that you did hella covers and stuff. When you hear certain songs now, do you hear something and you're like, damn, I want to cover that, or damn, I would love to flip that. Never, or not really. No, never. like that's gone. Gone. Never. That's crazy. No, I don't. I because like, I don't know. I never want to. Like maybe listening back to like certain and like, like I, mean, I always listen to human nature and i just like love the smoothness of that record that's like there's certain songs like i wish i wrote that but nothing where i'm like i would love to flip it you know what i'm saying because i don't know I, I i always think that like creating something out of nothing is always like the most beautiful thing you can do as an artist you know and Definitely. of course we need our inspirations and our that's with anything too not even just music i think like yeah. just being a creator you know like we were at the adidas employees store over the weekend and just talking about different people that create shoes and this design and this and that like just to be able to create like have this idea and to turn it into yeah. something that it's people want to consume yeah. that's like the most like the ultimate high yeah. it's insane like it's just how you said just something starting here and then you bring it in tuition and it's you know it's your career now and it's your life and it's not just a dream or an idea but it's real and i think that that's like something i'm definitely trying to show people too is that like ideas turn into things like you got to run with them when when you feel something and um what was your family always like super supportive i know you said your dad was always about it but was everyone like around like yo he's got it he should do it or is they like come on man because you know everyone wants to be a superstar or a rock oh, star yeah. or whatever when you're young yeah. are they like come on be realistic man go be a cop or? of course i mean my dad was always very supportive but of course i mean you know a lot of the people around me were like this is you know unrealistic but i was always just a dreamer like people would say that and i literally just it meant nothing to me ever i was never like discouraged by people's like negativity towards what i wanted to do ever but um of course man most people were like dude you should figure something else out like you live in michigan like nobody comes out of michigan is a po you know what i'm saying but it was like besides me right over my head that's crazy yeah. i mean but i mean you got superstars from from michigan i mean i mean you got you got eminem i mean you got like mike posner mike from posner Detroit. yeah but it's like it's just like michigan's a quiet place you know what i'm saying there's not a lot of noise it's like and like you know it's cool to come out of is this is like you saw how many people have recently came out of toronto right it's like it's all inspiration it's being like he's from where i'm from and he did what he did like i can do something similar you know what i'm saying and it's like when you have 20 people out of Toronto that are all having success in music, you can easily look and be like, okay, it's, it's possible for me. It's good to have but people like, like that because sometimes like some people see it and they're like, wow, he did it. I can do it. But then I feel like there's more people that are like, he did it. Well, he thinks he's too good now. Or he didn't. You know what I mean? There's always those people that I feel like just they're not dreamers. And so yeah. they don't know how to go to that next level. So yeah. they don't think it's possible. So it's like they yeah. were like. I think it's like less of people being like a not like not dreamers and dream i think it's everyone wants to be a dreamer you know i think it's just like it, the insecurities and the pers uh, the issue with your own personal perspective because it's like if you're insecure like you don't want to see the people you know strive and win because you know you're afraid that they might you know realize that they could do something more like and you might lose them and people are afraid to change but it's like you know if we're all secure we would like encourage people and like hope that they crushed it and hope they did even better yeah, if exactly. we weren't worried about like our own egos being you know hurt and is that a police light going on Oh, no, no. When they talk in the other studio, the oh, light comes okay. on. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. Damn it. You guys didn't close the door. The interview's ruined. Thanks for coming, bro. I'm out. Get See the you hell out of here. Um, what, what the hell did I want to ask you? There's something. Oh, oh. I saw in, a, in an interview, you had, you had mentioned something about eyes. Like, you're really into eyes. And I thought it was a cool, like, description. I wanted to, you to share that with them. Yeah. I just think eyes are, like, it's, like, my favorite part of humans. Because it's just, like, I've had, I'm the biggest, like, hippie. Like, I just, like, talk like this. But... Like you looking into someone's eyes, like that's how you perceive and you see everything. And it's like, it's the portal between like reality, like real, like things that are in front of you and like your thoughts and your mind and your creative space. And I just think like, it's so cool. I think it's cool that like they have color. Like that's the one part of our body that's just like colored, even if it's brown or if it's, it's anything, it's like. I don't know. Somebody's so colorblind out time. here right now, like, dude, forget it's you, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just glasses on in the back, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, that's very true. I, I feel like it's like that for a lot of people. Like, you see celebrities or whatever on TV, and it's like a, a not possible type of thing. But then you go to the show or you come to like something like this, and it's like you're yeah. you're real. Like this, yeah. you're right. This is the portal between like yeah. reality and like fantasy almost. Yeah. That's awesome. 100%. Yeah. Uh, we got Jackie out here. Uh, where's where's Jackie's mic? You don't even have it. You're not prepared, Jackie? They didn't give it to you, Jackie? Jackie. Hi. Hey. 
it's oh. just so you know it's not monster in her can and that's why she's a little got it off today got it got it, got it got all it. right so uh just, we'll go around if you got a question just hand up and then we'll, we'll knock it out right. let's go to jake man that's a tcr loyal right here this guy checks right in here. every day question? indica or sativa <laughs> uh sativa 100 percent. there we go anybody else? Like to get else sleepy don't be shy now. Y'all had time. Come on. Jay, come on. You're already going, bro. Oh, Run right it back. Here. Jay, going to have 35 questions. Okay. Hi, my name is Diana. Hi, Diana. Um, what's something that kept you going while trying to achieve your dream? Mm. Good question. Damn, I wasn't prepared for a question that good. Um, man, I think it was just always... Um, it's just been the love of music and the love of creating and, like, genuinely wanting to do this for as long as I can and, like, not having you know real life pull me away from what i've wanted to do and what i what i wanted to be yeah good question next next All right what's your name hi um i'm giovanni um i was just wondering do you think your socioeconomic background uh, influenced your music in any way socioeconomic like you know like just like financial like, like where you came from yeah, yeah. um uh, influenced my music a hundred percent a thousand percent i mean I grew up like you know I hate to like focus on the the, the sob story because you know so much beautiful stuff in my life has happened but it's like you know I grew up with nothing and that perspective to go from that to you know being able to afford the stuff I want is so important it gives me such a, a like a wide perspective to relate with my fans and people that might be going through the same thing to help them understand that they can do something similar you know to what I did all right anybody one else in the back we got one in the back what's your name my name is Alfred, What's up, man? and I want to know what's the number one artist you would like to collab with. Number one artist I like to. It's always so tough. There's so many people who I'd, I'd like to work with, but I think um, I'd love to work with J Cole and just just less That's of dope. yeah, less to like. Like obviously, I want to make a song with him, but more to just like pick his brain and to just like talk to him and. I think he's so intelligent. Do you ever see certain people on TV? I do this all the time, and I don't know if it's just because I'm in radio or what, but I'll see certain people on TV and I'll be like, I could hang out with him. Yeah, 100%. Like, like I really feel like like I'd vibe with this yeah, person, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? 100%. He's one of those people for sure. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Right here up front, right here up front. You? I'm Mariah. Um, if you didn't go into music, what would you see yourself as doing? I don't know. That's like such a tough one because like, if I didn't, if I wasn't an artist, I would be a producer. And if I like, I don't know, maybe I'd get into like, I'd either be in like film, cause like, I love the attention, yeah. I'd be in <laughs> film, or you know maybe I'd create something. I don't know, like a product or something cool and helpful. Good question. I have no idea though. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna close this out. Get ready for uh, performance, guys. Check him out on tour too. This thing is sold out. Any um, final thoughts, comments, concerns? Something we should touch on? Something we didn't? Something you want? to I think say? we nailed it. I think we did it. Giovanni got the best damn question of the whole thing. Good shit. Thanks, man. Uh, there it is, y'all. TCR, Tino Coach. Oh, real quick too. I don't know. Do you you, you drink right? I'm 20, dude. Oh, yeah, well, so, I was, I'm like, bro, on a song, damn song you listen, said, Hennessy. I turned, I turned 21 in a month. I can finally have my first drink. Where's that? Here, give me a, <laughs> give me an early birthday gift. Hey. Early birthday gift. You mentioned it in the record, so here you go. Hold that. Don't open it until you're 21, okay? I won't. I won't. Promise? I'm saving it. I'm keeping keeping the lid locked. You're going to see TMZ tomorrow. <laughs> Artist, uh, Bozzy, arrested <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, man, it's Bozzy. It's Tino Cochino Radio. Clap it up yeah. one more time for Bozzy. <laughs> I'm gonna crush this like right before we do this performance. I'll be right back. <laughs>